Well, everybody, I got to say, it's another one of those wonderful, fascinating moments where Dan and Agnes get together. Of course, Agnes Fivarelli, for those of you that for some reason have been living under a rock for the last five years. Uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the greatest out there. Got some great new courses, too, by the way. We can talk about those towards the end. But Agnes, how are you? How are you doing? I'm good, Dan. Good to see you twice in one week. Yeah. I know. It's been quite a village. Yeah. It's been busy. Yeah. We did, uh, what, two, basically two things last weekend because we were helping out that mutual friend. So Yes, so, that's true. I've seen you three times. I forgot. Yeah, three times in one week. You and I have gotten to spend some time together lately. Been, uh... <laughs> now, we've got a couple topics. One was a question I had from one of my viewers, and uh, it, it kind of intrigued both of us, but we'll, we'll be honest right up front. I'm not 100% sure where we're going to go with this. And then you had a, a potential that we might fold into. We'll see. Yeah, uh, but the one that uh, the viewer had asked me is kind of our thoughts on either the difference or similarities. I'm not again, I'm not sure where we're going, but between commitment and attachment, oh. I was like, oh, that's like a really fascinating kind of question. I mean, I don't yeah. know. What, what are your first just initial thoughts? I guess oh. right off the bat, when you think commitment and attachment, that's a really really clever question. Well, I think. I think because of the emails that I receive and, and just the comments that get made within conversations, what seems to come up again and again is I want a commitment. And I hear that a lot when people are looking for external security. So commitment in itself I think is a really beautiful thing, but it needs to be, I think from two people that have got good self love and two people that go into the commitment with giving rather than I need the commitment so I can feel secure. And I think women are the worst offenders with this. And I think that when you're going in with that, and I will use the word attachment when you're already going into wanting a commitment and you're already attached and you're trying to get more attached and you're trying to get a commitment to feel more secure. I think you got your ladder up the wrong wall. I, I think, love your phrases. yeah. <laughs> well, so this, this reminds me kind of of a theory I've been playing with lately, kind of between uh, the concepts of, uh, of love from the healthier standpoint. And I guess kind of yeah. more of this attachment -y kind of love. Um, but what it, seems like to me is it's almost like when the person is an object when it's mm. a thing or when they're it's meant to accomplish something within me that maybe is missing or I'm trying to uh, reach a certain status or I'm yeah. trying to get to a level of something or I just don't want to be lonely or mm. I feel like when it's coming from that object standpoint yeah that a lot of a lot of that that attachment type needy type stuff starts to come into play right now. All of a sudden we've got this odd expectation. That's not really based on anything other than this objectification I've done to you. Right. So yep. you now have to fulfill that re regardless if you know it or not. And then I set up this weird like attachment to you on that level. And then I think I also set up a weird imbalance and I also kind of separate. So that's been kind of how I've been tying it in in a few different places, but it's that, you know, how like when we, create too much importance on the manifestation it separates us from it i kind of feel yeah. like when we're going after something we're objectifying it's sort of mm. similar am i am i crazy or i mean no I am, no i don't uh, and i think it's when you do objectify it you see it like this oasis in the desert if i can just get to that oasis then i will be yeah then all will be right and you and i both know it's the answer isn't over there it's never been over there. It's the over there becomes over here when you change your getting persona. It's the difference between knowing that you have it and thinking you're creating it. I just did a mm. show on this. I haven't published it yet, but I just recorded it today. In fact, yeah, kind of a fresh feeling, but it's, it is that concept. And it's like, it's a different mindset. It's a different way of looking at the information, but I think it is that, I mean, all this stuff ties in. And I think that's kind of, at least to me, that was kind of what hit me when I think of commitment versus attachment. Mm. I think attachment in that very 
negative sense, that sense of there's a lot of viewers that are out there that are uh, yeah. again, probably have objectified or whatever, like any one of these things that we just talked about kind of falls into that. And mm. I think when, we've, when we're coming at it from that level, it's, it's not necessarily a healthy relationship. I would say to each his own, you can manifest whatever you'd like. Yeah. But if you're under the impression you're manifesting a healthy relationship, but you've got this very objective or attachment mm. needy kind of focus on it. Well, yeah. now you're not going in the same direction as what your desire is. And in that case, I would say it's probably not healthy. Yeah. I think for most of the people that are probably watching this that are truly trying to find love, I think it's probably one of the more common questions we get. Mm. Um, the attachment side of it seems to be a relationship killer. Yep. And you don't see it in that honeymoon phase. It no, pops up. Yeah. Everything's always rosy and great for three to six months. Sometimes I do see it extend to a year. But when you get past that, the cracks appear and you start seeing, you know, your neediness come up, your jealousy come up, your I need more, I'm not getting enough. You see all that stuff come up within you. And then the relationship then starts to echo it, echo it, echo it, echo it. And then it's, you know, you fall on your sword, so to speak. The relationship falls over. I did a, a video with a buddy. This is probably like two years ago at this point. It's on, on my channel somewhere. We called it Socks on the Floor. Yeah. It had to do with exactly <laughs> that. Once the, uh, the honeymoon phase is over, right? It's like, why are your socks are here on the floor again? You know, it's like, what the? You know, or the toothpaste cap is another yeah. ridiculous thing. But man, we'll get fired up over the stupidest things sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And you're right. So it's like, yeah, you've got this object and we painted them in this beautiful Sistine Chapel kind of way. And, and then we get in there and you're in that honeymoon phase and you're like, Oh, I'm so in love. Yeah. And I like know. Three, six months later, you're like, really your underwear again over here. Like what's yeah. dude, it's like <laughs> put away from the hamper. What's going on, man? Exactly. It's amazing where the love just disappears. But that's where you really get to see if you're willing to do the work on dissolving stuff in you and getting your eyes off blaming them. Cause I think that's where we fall down is we get to that point where you start to see the cracks and then you make it all about them, all about them, all about them. And you've lost the whole real lesson, which is it's about me and what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Yes. Like the world is showing us what we are doing. So it's yeah. like, if something seems out of whack, they're like, no, he's, it's his fault. He's yeah. just not willing to accept. He's not willing to do this. And it's like, Whoa, first off, you attracted him. Second off, right? That's like, there. We, a lot of this is us uh, pushed out, really. I mean, there's so many parts of this that I completely agree mm. with. Going theory, but it is, it's that projection, that screen, it's that you're yep. getting back what you're, what you're putting out, your crazy insecurities inside of you, all this stuff. And that's what you're seeing. Yeah. You know, and that's what you're experiencing. So it's, it is, it's that thing where if it's, if it's funky, what you're experiencing, there's an imbalance inside yourself. And it's like trying to explain to people too. And this, I, mean, I don't, yeah, I feel like I'm taking over this whole thing, but <laughs> no, keep going. Yeah. You, you explain to people that like, if you had it right now, if they were your girlfriend or boyfriend right now, yeah. you know, instead of a month from now, and you didn't do the changes that are going to happen between now and a month from now, you wouldn't last. You guys would yeah. break up like that. And yeah. it's not that it's, it's just, you're not ready yet mm. and boy, so much of it's that internal mm. fixing of things everyone wants to slap yep. a band-aid on the problem and i say, know no, you better solve the problem yes ointment on there and actually yep. really truly heal what it is that keeps festering yeah and there's a guy called gary zukov he talks about spiritual oh, partnerships yeah. you know zukov yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll put some um links to his youtubes yeah. down below because he talks about spiritual partnerships and this very issue and we'll also put your socks. <laughs> oh, the socks. Yeah, I'll link that socks video. Yeah, that, the, I want, it's a buddy, I want of, mine, it's a buddy of mine, Jeff, and it's funny. He'll love the fact that we're <laughs> plugging this from eons ago. It wasn't recorded real well, but yeah, it is what it is. Same, same yeah. room. It's just on my couch. So it's kind uh, of funny. Great. Well, I'd like yeah. to see that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, I like a bit of weirdness. Oh, he, now he is one of my weirder buddies. That is oh, no good, question about good, yeah, good. He's actually a really talented musician. He's a real, real nice guy, smart guy. But yeah, we, yeah. Cool. Excellent. So, cool. so yeah, the, the attachment side, just to kind of, I think, round out that part of this conversation anyway. Yeah. Attachment, I think, is when we're coming at it from that standpoint, like you mm. said, when we're coming at that from what are they fulfilling for me? 
Uh, yep. What's missing in me is really what the other way to ask that same question. Like if there's some sort of odd imbalance, and that's kind of what I mean by an object is they fulfill, fulfill something. You're not a hundred percent complete without them. Yeah. Then there's sort of a kind of that objective thing kind of happening at that point, or yeah. it's more of an attachment or now it's, mm. I, I can't leave them because they're helping pay the bills or there's so many scenarios where this yeah. situation yeah. plagues us. So yes. again, you can manifest that and that's great, but then you're the person that's stuck in a relationship, living in an apartment with a person you don't like wondering how yeah. I got here. So yeah. again, sometimes it's better to look at it a little deeper, which gets us into the other side of this. So what's the word commitment? One, yep. it's just a loaded word anyways. Uh, a lot of people are phobic of it, right? Commi uh, commitment phobe or whatever, right? They got all sorts of fun little nicknames. But some people, some guys especially, I think we're notorious yep. for this. We yep. want to have the milk, but we don't want the cow. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's such a bad way to look at it. Oh, but you know, always say, why don't you get the cow if you can have the milk for free yep. is the phrase. But yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, when you say it the way I just say it, it certainly ruins all the romanticism in that comment. That's for sure. Well, I... I remember listening to Abraham Hicks a lot and she used to say, and probably still says it's like she, when she was talking about, and this is in male female relationships and it also comes up in same sex relationships too, because you know, we take, we often take one role or another. So there's one person who is seeking freedom and the other person is seeking commitment and they end up together and it's you've got to well make peace with what you want and know you can still have that within a relationship you can have a commitment and you can have freedom if you really respect the other person and really allow them to be who they are and really allow them to do what they need to do and you rather than being on opposite sides of the team as in you're against each other right. he won't give me this she won't give me that you know and you're fighting each other for the things that you want you can be on the same side and allow and be giving and gracious about what the other person wants and needs and i can tell you when you learn that and you can do that and you honor the other person's needs for different things your relationship grows and gets better because there is a, we're on the same side. We're on the same team. I understand what you need. You do what you need to do today. I need to go and do this and then we'll get back together at the end of the day or next week or whatever. And we'll have some time together, but it's, it's really respecting and being gracious that the other person doesn't have the same needs, wants and desires that you do at exactly the same time all the time. I do think it's super important when we realize that uh, each of us in this relationship, right? Whether man, woman, uh, man, man, woman, woman, doesn't yep. really matter. Yep. But when we realize that we're two people traveling in life, learning things and growing and developing as our own beings. And then when we come together and can actually grow and evolve together, for that to happen, there has to be an understanding that both sides have needs and wants yeah. and both sides need to understand the other side. If this is going to work, it's not mm. a, not a compromise. It's not, it's, it's not like that. Like yeah. That's right off the bat. It's like, Oh, I love you. And yeah, I want to hear what's going on. Why? Yeah. Why are you upset? Or what did I say? How did that, how yeah. was that? Oh my God. Yeah. I didn't even see it that way, but you're right. Like it's that understanding that both of us are going to, uh, be there for each other and we're mm. going to also have needs from each other and it's just kind of that that yeah. balance that happens and i think when we it can is. acknowledge that I, I think a relationship's got a much stronger chance mm. when i think for a commitment yeah. to really work out uh from yeah. the standpoint of formal long-term mm. you know, marriage or hey we're boyfriend girlfriend or yeah, whatever exactly but that commitment i think it's important to understand that in a healthy relationship that's a and I actually don't think the commitment or the relationships that the, the hard part, it's the really being honest with what you've got going on within yourself and wow. being making an earnest attempt to continue to sweep your side of the street and stop um, doing that. Another crazy yeah. phrase. Love it. Sweep your side of the street. That's right. <laughs> Keep your ladder up against the right thing. Like, honestly, I love you. I don't know if I've said that enough yet, but I love you. That's no, funny. it's funny as you, so I wrote down my little thing I'd show you, but what's the fun in that? Um, but 
you brought up a point. I don't know. This might even be um, kind of where this <laughs> starts to spin. And you know how our side yeah. salads become the main dish. Yeah. Um, Actually, concert- Dan. Yes. I have a friend, the one that I do my um, Neville stuff with. She said to me the other day, she said, oh, we're go-, she was gonna, trying to say to me the side salad. She said the side saddle, and we ended up laughing our heads off for about 15, 20 minutes because it just went off on another <laughs> because tangent. went off on a total tangent. <laughs> it's that the side the main saddle course. now. I love it, the side saddle. That's freaking <laughs> awesome. Uh, but no, the thing you brought up, and I think, you're, I think you were just even speaking to it, so you were even alluding back to my question, so this obviously has to be talked about. Yeah. But you said coming to terms with or being at peace with your decisions, and I thought about it, I'm like, wow, how many of us do you think, and we've talked beliefs, I think that's one angle, but I think this is a better way to look at it, uh, coming at it from the, how many people out there have contradicting thoughts? Mm. I want to be in a relationship but I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to have to deal with, I don't want to have to tell somebody, right? but I want to be in a relationship, but I don't want to have to have these time constraints. I don't have to worry about someone else's, but I want to be in a relationship. Yeah. Right? Like, dude, your yeah. thoughts are totally contradicting each other. It just made me realize like mm. how often we can be misaligned mm. in our own thoughts thinking, no, I really do want that. But mm. when we look at some of the places where we're like, well, no, that's why I don't want to be with them right now. Right. Or yeah. whatever. So it's just, I, I thought I was curious what your thoughts were on that whole concept, I guess. Uh, contradicting, thoughts. contradicting thoughts. Yeah. I think it's sometimes you've got contradicting thoughts, but they're not actually real. Like someone said to me recently, Oh, I don't want to be in a relationship because that means I'm going to have to do everything for the other person. And I said, like what? And it was a woman. She said, oh, well, you know, cook and clean. And I said, who said you got to do all that? Right. <laughs> There's no rules. Like, like that was already a preconceived idea yeah. from past relations. That's my exact ex- you know? ex- it was like, example well, of exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, and also, oh, if I'm in a relationship, then I'm not free. Well, free to do what? Free to do what you want when you want. Well, you can still do what you want when you want, but you just communicate, look, I need to go and do this. And I also want to spend time with you. So you work, you can talk about it and you work those things out. So you have time together and time to do what you both need to do. It's not, or I'm afraid I'll lose my heart. No, it's really not. It's actually right. not. It's really not. You just communicate and sometimes you don't communicate properly and you make, you know, you forget to say something or you, you forget to say the whole thing about, uh, you know, I've got to go do that and then I've got to go do that. Or and Sometimes you, they just don't enter your mind yeah, and they should no, have. You, You're like, no, yeah. I totally should have, but yeah. I didn't. I don't know why. I was just yes. very, what I was doing and completely. Exactly. You get lost in what you're doing and yeah. you forget. It's like, I am so sorry. Exactly. You just, <laughs> I mean, if it's own. like every day, that's a different story. Like we need to start yeah. setting reminders or finding another <laughs> way, but. Uh, exactly. Just communicate you know. better. You, you do, you can't just run around and not communicate. I mean, some, the, the upside is you've got someone that actually is interested in what you're doing and someone who would like to know what you're doing and they love hearing about your day and what's going on tomorrow or yesterday or whatever. Mm. So you do need to check in and, and, and do that on a daily basis. Um, the downside of when you don't have to do that is it's like, well, you've got in your head, no one cares about me and what I'm doing. So I'm free to do everything, but no one cares. Right. Yeah. So, so it's like a catch you know, 22, right? Yeah, oh, I so, want to tell, oh, I don't have anyone to tell. I don't have anyone to tell. Yeah, so yeah, it just yeah. depends on what's more important to you. And like you said, neither is right or wrong. It's just preferences and things you prefer to do. And, just different ways around the wheel. And I, and I think without a doubt, some around the wheel, that's number three. That's awesome. I'm going to start <laughs> writing these down. Like uh, Anya said, birds before land. Or wherever you got that from. That's another one I always loved. That was that's a weird one. one. Yeah, that was yeah, a, that was a good one. one. I love that one though. It's awesome. Yeah. Too. yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, so I, uh, a lot of people, it's just good to kind of, for those that are struggling, maybe trying to get that creation going or wherever, trying to get to that place where you and your specific person are together. Just yep. make sure you don't have some sort of funky contradicting thoughts in there too, right? Because yep. you can have your cake and eat it too. There's a lot of people mm. that say you can't, but mm. man, believe it or not, you can. I've I've bought cakes before and eaten it. <laughs> I even put a candle in it one time and blew it out myself. I lit it myself. I did the whole thing myself. And it still counted. 
<laughs> it still counts. It can happen. That's all I'm saying. I'm just, a lot of people yeah. are like, that's impossible, Dan. And I'm like, yeah. no, I did it. I saw it with my own eyes. Yeah, yeah, it is it possible. Weird. And it is possible to have calm, peaceful relationships where you're not talking about the relationship all the time, where there's no dramas or every third week oh, yeah. that you just literally enjoy each other you cook you enjoy going for a walk watching a movie you do very everyday ordinary things and there's just a piece in the house or a piece in the you know wherever you are together it doesn't have to be i need to talk about the relationship and you're squeezing a chicken around the neck all the time so you bring up another wonderful point um how many well yes Right? Because they're always running about. I mean, you go out there to Hawaii and they're just wild everywhere. It's not very big. You wouldn't want to eat them per se, but they're all yeah. Cornish game hens, really. Um, no, so with um, people and uh, they're having expectations of how uh, relationships are, mm. like maybe their mom and dad always fought. You just, you brought up such a beautiful point. And, and there's this understanding in their lives that that's what a relationship is you have your little dramas you have your up and downs you're always talking about it and that's almost what every relationship they end up in and becomes and that's what yeah. they're used to but they keep wondering why does my relationship keep ending or why am i yeah. having a hard time attracting uh guys that don't want to argue with me and uh, mm. or women or whichever but it, it, it you bring up that point where i i think some of us really do have to look at what type of relationship are we really looking for? Have we even yeah. drafted that out in our minds? Like what yeah. is, I mean, we've talked about commitment and attachment. Like yeah. have we really thought about what a, a good, healthy relationship yeah. is for me or you or, yeah. you know, I, uh, exactly. I think that's a, another valid question mm. for, uh, for those of us trying to manifest relationship. Mm. What, what are you trying to manifest or do you even know? Exactly. Exactly. I think, I think one of the best things you can have is to have a sense of peace between you and a sense of fun between you and a sense of you're on the same side and you're enjoying just living a quiet life as in mentally quiet, emotionally quiet. You don't have huge disturbances all the time. I think that is one of the most wonderful things but you have to cultivate that within yourself to be able to have that in the relationship. And that sounds easy and it's not, it, you know, it takes, you know, time. It takes time to understand that you're creating dramas. It takes time to understand that you don't have self love. It takes time to understand that you're blaming other people. You're projecting stuff out and you don't think it's got anything to do with you. So you got to, it's like you learn all these levels over time and you can have, a great relationship with firstly with yourself and then it gets echoed in a relationship with another person. And I, to your point right there, I think that's one of the key ways that we can sort of self measure, if you will, is, is yep. when you are alone or when you're single, do you mm. find that you are frequently, uh, you're always involved in drama. Drama is always mm. happening around you because odds are, if that's the case in your personal life now, yeah, happenstance maybe it's coincidence that it mm. always seems to be happening around you wherever yeah. you're at like the, the charlie brown character pig pen always had a dust cloud around him I, he's not dirty no it's just the dust that follows yeah. him it's not, yeah. you know. but it's i think it's when you realize that this is kind of what my life is normally like then that's quite mm. possibly the relationship you're going to expect or be involved with because you're used to having drama and yeah. i would say kind of to your point as I started to evolve, I, I think it had more to do with my spiritual path and just the peace and tranquility, but I, I, happiness in life, all those things kind of lead to the same general sense of bliss, right? But when we started to find that, that the lack of desire to have all these spikes, the super high, super yes. low, I want to, you know, experience that lottery win every day, yeah. right? Well, then you've got to have some sort of crash to balance that to a degree. Yep. You can't spike in your endorphins up to the point where your heart explodes out of your chest. I mean, it's just not how it works. There's a mm -hmm. balance in life. And I think, yeah, it's just when you get happy with the, the more calm kind of life, yes. your relationships tend to not be mm. as crazy and up and mm. down and spiky. And you don't uh, get so tired because you get those huge oh, highs right. or lows and then right. you crash emotionally and then you 
feel exhausted and then you've got to still try and get up and go to work and you've got to try. Yeah. All that's extremely taxing on the mind and the body. Yeah. I don't think we're taxing. used to doing that. And I, you know, I think some of that's, you know, with this new world today with the way marketing's done and kind of on your phones and in your face. And it's always like that needs something to grab your attention away from the moment. So yeah. everything's meant to just, yeah, it'd be like really huge. Yeah. It, it's just funny. Cause it's like, like we just had an election out here in the States and it's just funny how things have to get ramped up now so much greater than the last time. Like, mm. oh, that, like you were talking about like that, that spike and then you're exhausted and then you got to fall, but fall, you know, go to work the next day. But then what you find is like, I want a bigger spike tomorrow because that it's like, it's like a heroin addict, right? Like yes, I need yes. that giant, I need that rush again. And, and I'm constantly chasing that rush. Yep. And you, you're living for the rush now. Now you're not living for the relationship. Now it's not even right. Mm. We just totally lose sight of, of our focus, our path, what mm. we're here we think to do or try to experience or mm. what our job is or what we're parents or whatever your, you know, your role is as a person. It's, it's yeah. tough when you kind of get off on these weird uh, emotional roller coasters. I know. Know. Yeah. And it's really, it takes its toll on your health, on your concentration at work you know, all sorts of areas get affected by that one thing. So it, it, it looks like, and, and you and I have talked about it many times, people trying to get an ex back or a specific person or they don't have a relationship and they want one. It's like, if you can put more energy into things like meditation, affirmations, and then just calming yourself down, the external world will shift accordingly to what you are doing. And I remember years ago, I went to see Abraham Hicks years ago when she was still doing CD videos. Inside one of them, there was this little leaflet that was part of the CD. And it said, if you could spend time doing 15 minutes of breathing every single day, literally just deep breathing in and out, in and out, solidly for 15 minutes, she said everything in your life would start to level out and smooth out. And I remember thinking, wow why like i i just at that time i could not wrap my head around that but it's it makes sense you're surrendering you're letting go when you're breathing you're relaxing you're letting go of the madness you're trying to let go of the anxiety any other negative emotion you've got going on you regroup as you calm down again the external starts to fall into place and i remember thinking that was such an easy thing to miss because obviously you watch the CD, but that one little leaflet, I will never forget it. And I it had, yeah. Right. I was going to say to your point, and, and I absolutely completely agree with that. And even recently experienced where I, I went a few days and I hadn't really gotten my meditation. Cause I, I do a daily one too, like a lot of people. And it's yeah. just one to kind of level set for me. And I hadn't really gotten to it. And I noticed such a huge difference. Yes. To me, it's kind of like, um, like thinking of a, like a, like a little sonograph or whatever, you got that mm. cosmic radiation background that just happens throughout our days. When you meditate, it level sets, it like flat lines that out. Yep. And then when you go and start your day again, all right, well, you start to get some more of that background noise, but it's decent. If you mm. don't meditate and then you get to day two, well, that starts to get noisier. Your, your pattern starts to get more out of flux, right? And then you go, mm. one, now it's a lot spikier. Yeah. And it's when you get in there and meditate and just focus on your breathing and nothing else, you actually kind of, you, you create that flat line again. And it really does work like that. It just kind of, yeah. it brings you back down to a really good grounded state. And then things that just moments ago were out of control, worrying. Now all of a sudden you're looking at them through calmer eyes. Mm. Maybe, maybe solutions to some of your problems suddenly pop up. You're like, oh yeah, I didn't even think about it from that angle. And now all yeah. of a sudden, I'm, right? So it's, it is just so much more helpful when we can, calm mm. down some of that drama that just everywhere definitely right people are freaking out and definitely and as much as i know people love listening to success stories or you know where we read out a success story or interview a success story all that stuff not to take away from that because i think that's inspiring but if you could do more of the calming yourself down through meditation affirmations and anything that just makes you relax more listening to beautiful music or laying in the park, you know, looking up at the clouds or the sun for a bit, anything that increases your level of relaxation and your 
that has a very concentrated effect on what you get on the outside because you're not getting vibrational matches of madness over here where I am and then the madness comes in from the outside. The more you practice the peace and the calm, the more those things get reflected back to you. Your life becomes calm in all areas. It starts to go like that and then it starts to level out. Right, right. And I think that's what kind of comes to with, I mean, again, not to badmouth the success stories either in any way, shape no. or form, because they can be very, very inspiring. Yeah. But at the same time, they sometimes get uh, brought into a certain subject. And again, our videos aren't hours and hours long, right? They're usually generally very short and they're usually very subject focused. That's just mm. kind of how they work and that's how attention spans work. But yeah. it does seem like sometimes success stories get rooted in a certain micro focus but yes. really, when you look at what that person did to be successful, yep. there's a lot more to it than just that technique they used or just yep. the, the way they did X, Y, or Z. A lot of times, like your point, they, they were meditating on a regular basis. Maybe mm. they didn't realize how big a difference it made, but mm. it does, right? Mm. Like there's other practices that were happening. Yep. They're lacking of questioning their beliefs, maybe, or the fact that this is very aligned with what they've always seen their lives being. Like, there's just so many mm. things come into play to how our manifestations work that I think success stories do sometimes simplify that. And yeah, you're right. I think, like, I mean, with Hicks, I totally agree with what she's saying. The, the power of spending that time every day on your breath is so much more uh, helpful in what we're trying to do. No matter, I mean, no matter what it is that you're trying to do, unless you yeah. like getting stressed all the time, in which case, don't meditate. That's going to yeah. mess that up. <laughs> that will screw that up for sure. But if you're like the rest of us that yeah. enjoy being a little calmer most Whoa. of the time, oh my God, it's just such, such an amazing difference. Mm. When you, when you do that. So it again, is. I don't want to ruin it for those that are into stress. It's awesome. Yes, yes. Keep going. It's like Kramer <laughs> from Friends, right? They're, oh, uh, Kramer. From- Time, right, his hair was still like ah, right, yeah, just always coming in. I love it. That was such a great <laughs> stressy character. Oh, he was, and he, he was, was still like chill and relaxed, but he was always so strung out too. Yeah. So was, that was. I a, think that's how was, most of us are, probably. By the yeah, way, that's, that's, that's probably why it. that got watched so much because yeah. he he just showed us well pockets of anxiety. <laughs> pockets of us, yeah, pockets of anxiety for sure. For sure. No, I, yeah, I don't know where we're at uh, time-wise. Did you want to try to cover yours? or Yeah, did we... I want to, I saw something that See, people have prepared. mentioned. Um, well, I've been reading this book on my channel, uh-huh. like bits out of this book. And um, there's something that Neville says a lot that people often bring up. Ooh, okay. And it's about signs follow. They do oh, not yeah. proceed. Remember that? Amen. Yeah, I love it. And yeah. Yeah, people forget that too. And they get so yeah. focused on the signs that they start manifesting signs. Anyway, oh yeah. God, love it. Love so, it. And, and this, this was hard for me to understand because I was thinking, hang on a minute, you get a sign and then something happens. That's how I used to think. And it's like, well, no. The you signs. did the work and then the signs started and then you kept well, doing yeah, the work. You had signs kept happening, but we, yeah, we do. We back at a step and we forget that the sign is not preceding the thing happening. The sign is actually following the, the change in you. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I love yeah. this quote, but please, yeah. please. This is yeah. for, for those that don't fully <laughs> grasp this, this is probably one of the true key aspects of yep. manifest. Yep. So, yeah. Beautiful. So he says proof that you are, will follow the consciousness that you are. It will not precede it. You are an internal dream or dreaming non-eternal dreams. Your dream takes form as you assume the feeling of reality. So that's in typical Neville language. Yeah. But basically in 2018 language, you have to have an internal shift So if you are wanting something, you stop thinking of it. You start thinking from it if you understand Neville. And if you understand that you've got to focus on on solutions to get solutions and let go of focusing on problems, which is, you know, more modern day English. So if you are able to make that shift internally slowly over time you shift your thoughts your beliefs you do it with affirmations imagining before you go to sleep or whatever technique you want to use then you will start to see that the sign is 
the secondary thing, but you did the first thing, which was you shifted your state, you shifted your feeling, you shifted your belief, you shifted your thought, you shifted what you were focused on, and then you got an external result. The sign which starts to show you that things are in motion and things are moving. But it's like you go, often people go, I just saw a sign. That means something's coming. It's like, no, it's like seeing the tip of the iceberg and then the whole bigger bits down below. The whole bigger bit was you started to shift out of the lack of that, whatever it is that was wanted. And you started to move into feeling more relaxed, having more of an open hand, letting go, surrendering, doing all the things that you know can help you. And then something manifested. Because it, it is, it's really tied into, I think we were talking about this even earlier, but the energetics that come along with yep. feeling that mm. thing that you are connecting with, creating, coming yep. from. Yep. There's a lot of ways we can look at it. And, and I, I think some are probably healthier than others. But again, it's not so much the word as it is the concept of like mm. how you're seeing it. But it is, you're right. It's that, that feeling is, is the shift, you know, getting yourself into that feeling, into where mm. you can stay there you can be there yep. because that is your new reality and then yep. that once you're in that new reality then it starts to coalesce into this yes. form that you're trying to create if you will but it yep. happens uh, as a as an afterthought almost right it's yes. the, and that's where the sign comes from as well i agree it, it's yep. very confusing and uh, it is confusing I mean, that's again, why i thought bring it up. Show. Well, we could do a whole hour on that for sure yeah i know it is Probably confusing that. because it kind of neville sees it explains it back to front to what people think it is and and well and he does it in his wonderful neville neville-esque yeah, way nevillite way is yeah, yeah yeah it's like what mm. language is that is it sumerian what are you saying <laughs> so what are you saying what are you saying i know and yet there's so many good nuggets and there's another thing oh, i wanted man. to mention too because people I'll keep asking heart. about free will yeah free willy too and you gotta remember that there's lots of different answers to the whole free will question but as i understand it today yes Technically, we do have free will because we can do what we want when we want, but you are influenced by two things, the past and the tentacles you still have emotionally from the past to the present. The second thing is the assumptions that you make today. The assumption will trump whatever it's it's the trump card whatever you assume whatever you put more belief thought attach feeling to that's going to trump free will so even if you're thinking about something negative if you've got a hostility towards someone and you can't stop thinking about it and you're putting a lot of energy into it you're going to create some you know bang argument you're gonna you're gonna manifest something because you've put all that hostility into the energy waves you've projected that out yeah and that's so, how i see it like you'll end up cutting mm, someone off but barely but they'll get yeah, really angry at yeah, you right yeah. they'll get in front of you and pump their brakes mm. and you know you're like what I, I i had my blinker on i'm sorry yeah man. Like, yeah like, but that again yeah. it's you're right you're putting ripples out into the universe Those yeah ripples, Coming right back to you. Yeah. So yes, I I would say technically free will exists, but we're so impacted and affected by the past, what's happened to us since childhood, and we're so impacted by what we think and feel and believe in the present about a whole bunch of different subjects. So your free will kind of gets bumped out of the ring until you understand a lot of these concepts that you can con you can redirect your mind you can change the course of things through being conscious of what you think and working on putting things in the subconscious through repetition etc cetera, etc cetera. that's what i think to me it sounds like you're heavily kind of into that realm of how many of us are uh, operating in life unconsciously mm. how many of our decisions yeah. are actually happening from an unconscious place yeah. how many of our reactions instead yeah. of proactive we're reacting we're always. reactive yeah you for sure react to what you created so we created yeah. this, right and then i react to it well yep. dang, now i'm asking for it again tomorrow yeah right? i'm, I'm gonna get more of it because i keep reacting to mm. it. so i think a lot of us i think you're right aren't noticing 
how one, how involved we are with what we experience. <laughs> but that being said, yeah, I, I think a lot of us tend to start to lose lose sight of of of, of what we're putting out there and how we're mm. being energetically and and how lacking of consciousness we are of what we're doing. It's we're programmed yeah. to not question things, and I think. Mm. So really need to stop and and, mm. and really look what am i doing how am yeah. i behaving how yeah. am i acting why do i yeah. keep react? why do i keep getting angry why, mm. why do I need to push my buttons like mm. that why does one person keep getting under my skin there's something to that like mm. it's it's showing itself for a reason again us pushed out like there's yeah. places where I absolutely love this like if there's someone that's always getting under your skin yeah so, you know, like yeah. pay attention. There's something there. Something exactly there. when you figure right. it out and it yeah. goes away inside of you, it goes away there too. You know, yeah. all of a sudden they're gonna be nice to you. Maybe all mm. of a sudden they get a new job, whatever the case is. But uh, exactly. Like in the case surprised. of Neville's mental diets, the story about the girl with her boss, and she thought he was, you know, a very unpleasant, critical, judgmental, unappreciative man. So she kept arguing with it, with him in her mind on the way to work and on the way home. And then he kept acting it out. So she changed her mental conversation about him. And then within a short period, the whole relationship changed. So you do, it's, I just find it interesting how this stuff looks like it's invisible, but it's all connected. We always want to point out from away from ourself but as the adage goes right when you point you have three fingers like it's hard to do you get these mm. three fingers pointing back that's the adage mm. right when i point there's three pointing back at me so many of us don't truly realize how much yeah. of what we're constantly pointing or that's not right that's not how it should be you're not behaving it's like yeah. what are you doing though how often are yeah. you doing the same thing well that's different no it's exactly the, Play the same yeah that's why it keeps happening to you yeah because it's in you <laughs> putting it out there let go of it Stop let go of it with your boss Stop, you know like mm. you realize that maybe he can be an okay guy I, it, it reminds me of uh it's kind of funny when i was in college and i was taking english and i hate english i was really good with math and science and all that crap but english yep. and history i hate it, hate yep. it still, you know so yep. 1a was all writing and all this crud and i got this teacher i was doing horribly i was getting like when you know on the number of points and the points i was getting i'm like you know d range for sure i'm like oh this is horrible <laughs> So I have a, a meeting with the guy and I, I meet, I think I met with him once or twice in his office hours. Right. And I understood finally what he was asking for. I finally understood what he was asking of us as a class and mm. of writing and what his expectation was of how we were utilizing what he's teaching us. Right. So I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. I understand it now started following his, uh, his stuff. And again, I hated this guy. He was the hardest teacher I ever had started following him. I ended up with an A in the class. I got an A in the class. Wow. I like how he taught me to write so well. I took him for one B. So I hated this guy. But when I finally understood what was really up, wow. I found out he was awesome. Mm. And I took him for a whole another semester. And he's made more difference in my writing than any other person ever in the history of my school. Wow. So it's kind of funny how sometimes when we shift our beliefs, <sighs> we shift the way we see it. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing what can shift inside of us. Yeah. You know, it's still that's the same. A good, that's a good example. That relationship with your teacher. That's a really good example. Mm. He was, yeah, he was the teacher that people didn't like taking either. Mm. Oddly, he was one of the people that was one of the graders of like the SAT, the, the written part of that. He was actually mm. at the time was one of the people. I don't even think they have that test anymore, but he was wow. one of the people that used to grade part of it. So he totally knew what they were looking for. It was pretty cool because he taught us like the basics. Here's what writing's supposed to be. Follow these mm. rules. You'll be fine. Mm. So, but I, another great word from him too, and this is totally side salad, but he would use things, he would put M-A, if you used a word that was kind of crappy, like it wasn't a very good word or a very strong word, yeah. he put M-A, and what it stood for was merely adequate. <laughs> that's just like, wow, like, that's a creative way to say you suck, dude. You like, suck, yeah, that's, adequate. that's very um, uh, awesome. lovely, subtle way of saying it. I went back to take one B with this guy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and my merely adequateness went back to take another semester of this guy. So that was pretty Fantastic. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, there's people that shape your lives. People that shape your lives. 
Yeah. And then, and then it's cool. Like, you know, where, where you and I are kind of at in our worlds right now. Like we've got these, after building, after making lots of mistakes in our past, we finally mm. have this kind of really cool place and it becomes a, like a new foundation from which to build a whole yeah. new kind of uh, life or stratosphere or whatever. And I, I think a lot of people get so stuck on the fact that they're stuck where they're at. And it's like, no, you can always mm. recreate where you're at. I mean, maybe there's yeah. some things you can't erase from your life or ex- mistakes we've made in the past, but you can always kind of recreate, start a new yeah. foundation and begin a new a new yeah. home uh, a new house of cards <laughs> if you're into that the house of cards yep so uh, this is a great uh, great show i think we covered uh, very so many, interesting very so interesting. many uh, useful topics and again mm. why limit you and i to one topic when we could possibly exactly you know? we like all the little side trails it is so much fun <laughs> for you and i to have a slightly different uh, just to be able to talk just openly about things yeah. too yeah yeah no, that's it good because literally, yeah, just for those of you that, you know, don't know, but Anya and I literally, we, I said commitment or attachment. And like, before we started recording, it was like, yeah, I have nothing. <laughs> let's, let's yeah. give it a go. Let's see where yeah. this show takes us. And that's, I, again, I think, uh, I think mm. we covered some really, really good ground today. And I like, I like that, that with our, our um, sessions, Dan, is we don't plan like we used to because we, uh, like the just Spontaneity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like cause yeah. you know you, you uncover things that you don't uncover if you've got like a set thing of what, what you're gonna do. And you know, I think letting go of that more and more. And I often I'll interview people and they say, Oh, can you send me the questions beforehand? And I think I don't have any questions. Uh, I, I literally <laughs> just, you know, I, I don't want to be restricted by a whole yeah. list of questions. I like to be spontaneous. I like to be inspired yeah. to just go off on a tangent. And, and that's what makes the conversations more interesting, I think. Well, and I, I think you would agree, like a lot of the comments that people, one, I think we talk about stuff that's good. So I think that period, first and foremost, <laughs> but I think a lot of the people appreciate the banter and the way we go back and forth and the way we play off each other. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that we do have a cool energy together. We do. Right? We fun. do. It's fun for you and I to get together and talk. And, and we chat a little before we actually start recording, just, you know, because you and yeah. I enjoy talking to each other. And we do. And we record and we enjoy talking to each other long yeah. enough for you guys get to enjoy it with us. And Exactly. It's a fun time. It's yeah. Like and it's developed over however long we've been doing like it. Now. A year and a half into At it least probably. a year. Yeah. It's been yeah. a year and a half yeah. since we've started. Yeah. No, yeah. it's good. And it's, <laughs> oh, it's been all great. because and you made fun of me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's just, I was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. No, our whole meeting is actually funny. That's a story that's not ever really appropriate oh, no. for YouTube completely. But um, oh, it is it. very funny how you and I met. Uh, mm. And you guys, you. Anya and I are very aware of the story, but it is funny. And I, I didn't particularly like Anya. <laughs> I know. And you know what? We'll tell that. That'll be a to be continued for the yeah, next one. We'll, yeah. we'll start we're, off we're with that do. little story. Because <laughs> it's great. It's, I yeah, love it. It is funny. And then how, how close we've become since. I know. I know. Very funny. Yeah, very, very funny. Well, good, Anya. Right. I appreciate everything on that, obviously. And uh, uh, there are some, there are some people that have mentioned we might want to try to at some point maybe, maybe do this twice a month. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. We don't yeah. have to. But I'm just saying. Mm. I like I like it. I like um well, you know, I think it's always that thing of having conversations about what some of the viewers ask and then yeah. it's also we can do a bit of Neville or a bit of, you know, it doesn't have to be Neville based all the time. There's lots of other good teachers and and we can bring in other things. But yeah, I think well, I, love, I love endless... me some Neville. So I, it's always fun to Yeah. I, I, you know, I've got his complete reader. So, you know, yeah. whenever there's a, a time that we want to talk Neville, oh. I think it's a blast to do that. Neville oh. is like I was just saying, one of the videos I recorded today, I mean, Neville, uh, I think is the best as far as how you really get the ball rolling. I, yeah. I always felt that, uh, I think his, uh, minute to minute stuff during the day isn't necessarily as good as maybe Esther Hicks. I feel like that's yeah. where she's really strong, but she's I don't think really she's strong. strong at creating the ball rolling. Like mm. ne- I think Neville is really, really good at that. Like, so I think it's when we put mm. the two together, we start getting into a kind of a, a good daily practice or a good, yep. Uh, but yeah, it's just, yeah, uh, I, I agree. There, I, and there's uh, obviously, uh, Hey, mm. and all these other people, there's so many other great teachers out there too. Yeah. Yeah. And even people doing YouTube stuff. So whatever it's, uh, it all exactly. works out. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. It. Well, it's a wrap you, right on the one hour. We one did. Hour. We nailed it. <laughs> awesome. On you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we'll say goodbye to the viewers and then we can say goodbye by ourselves. Bye everyone. Bye viewers.